What's going on you guys, it's Cody. We're back with another update video on the duplex that I've currently got under contract. We've been going through the motions, we've been getting the pre-qualification out of the way, we got the inspection out of the way, and I just wanna give you an update on where we're at with everything. So we've been prepping the photos and the video and everything we need to get the property ready for rent. We've been working on that very diligently over the past couple of days because we wanna get this place filled as soon as we are able to. If we can get it filled through the end of October here, then we're gonna get a little bit of rent there, we're gonna get rent for November, and then we don't have our first payment due until December 1st. So we're going to get about a month and a half where we don't have to make any payments. We are going to have to pay still, you know, we're paying for closing costs and everything like that, but it is going to help with the cash flow at least from month to month to be able to collect a little bit of money before we actually have to make an official payment. So we want to get it rented as soon as possible. This is going to help with our cash on cash return and we want to get that out of the way. If I can get somebody filled in there, then I don't have to worry about it. In the meantime, we worked on the inspection, right? We talked about the inspection in the last video what came up on that the roof on this place is totally shot now unfortunately we weren't able to negotiate any repairs with the seller so unfortunately that's something that I'm gonna have to take care of after the fact it's not something I'd usually love to do but being that this is such a good deal in the first place you know I figure hey I'm gonna have to do some repairs this is something that's worth it it's a relatively small pitch on the roof it's very flat there's two sides to it there's nothing crazy going on with it so it should be fairly affordable to be able to do that change there so with the inspection out of the way the next things that we're moving on to are the appraisal. The appraisal, we've got to talk about that. But real quick, one other thing that I just thought of that we've been working on with this property is we've actually been putting together a list of items that we need to get changed or prepared uh, for when we have tenants moving in. So as soon as we close on it, we're gonna have to go in and make some changes. A couple of these things are pretty straightforward. It's basically gonna be stuff like changing out the locks, putting new locks on the doors. There's a common entryway into the duplex. So you go in a common door and then you go up the stairs or down the stairs and uh, then you've got the door that goes into your own individual unit. So I'm gonna have to change out those locks to make sure those are separate change out the lock on the common door because I have no idea who's got access to that so there's a couple of different things that we're gonna have to take care of and also just some small minor repairs just for things that I want to get done before somebody is actually living there so uh, overall not too bad it's gonna be about a couple hundred bucks worth of work you know a couple hours and that's pretty much it so let's jump into talking about the appraisal we had the appraisal done on this property and unfortunately it came in low so I wanted to make a video about what to do in this particular type of situation. First, I want to talk about my experience with this because I want to give you a real world breakdown of what happens in these types of situations. Then I'm going to give you a couple of different options as far as how you could proceed if you ran into this situation yourself. So the story here is that we originally agreed to purchase this place for $290,000. That was the purchase price that we had agreed on. Well, we got the appraisal done and the appraisal came back at $283,000. Now it did come in lower than what we agreed to purchase the property at, which puts us in a problem situation because the bank is is only willing to lend off of the appraised amount. So if the bank says, hey, the appraiser says that the place is only worth 283, we're only gonna lend off of that amount. So if they come back, they say it's 283, not 290, they're gonna require me to pay 20% down off of the 283, and if I have to make up the difference myself, I have to pay cash out of pocket in order for that to happen. So this is one of those hard situations where the market value is actually higher than what the appraised value says it is. The market value is actually what determines what people are willing to buy and sell property for, right? If you go to somebody and say, hey, I agree to pay you this amount for the property, and they say, great, I agree to accept that, that's what's considered the market value. The appraised value is a different number. The appraiser is gonna go into the property, they're gonna look at the property, they're gonna look at how many bedrooms it has, how much square footage it has, what condition it's in, what street it's on, when it was built, and they're gonna compare that property to other ones that are there in that neighborhood that are very close to that property. So for instance, on my home, this particular house sits on a little bit busier street than some of the other homes there in the community. So the appraiser has to make adjustments based off of that. They take this other property and they say, this one's worth 285, let's say, and they're gonna take away money from that property to say the adjusted value would be 277 if it were on a busy street like the property that we've got here as the subject property. So for me, I get a little bit of a hit on the appraised value because it's on a busier street. I get a little bit of a hit because it's got less square footage, but I get a benefit because I've got a deck and a patio where these other houses don't. So that's how the appraisers are really coming to their appraised value. The other thing that you need to keep in mind that appraisers are looking for is the concessions or closing costs that were paid on the property. And they're also looking at the age or 
the the uh, progression of the market you know how's the market moved right now in my market the values are going up so quickly that appraisers can't keep up with the information the appraisers are looking at information on houses that sold three four five maybe even six months ago and they're not taking into account the actual appreciation of the market over just that short amount of time if we expect to see anywhere from eight percent appreciation in a year which here in utah is definitely doable definitely reasonable number to expect that means that over the course of just six months that'd be four percent on the price that you would expect so if the house is supposed to be three hundred thousand it could be three hundred and twelve thousand by the time you get it appraised if you're looking at a six month span there now you might be thinking well cody isn't this great the bank said it's worth less so now you're going to pay less yes that's true but the situation here is a little bit difficult because i agreed to pay that 290 and i was going to get a loan based off of that amount However, it doesn't look like that's actually gonna happen now. So I have to make the decision to go back to the seller and try to negotiate uh, some type of win-win for the both of us. So now I wanna talk about some of the different options that you've got when an appraisal comes in low like this. Number one, we already talked about, you can pay the difference as the buyer. For me in my situation, I could pay that extra $7,000 out of pocket, but it would eat into my cash on cash return, and so it's not something that I wanna do, nor do I even have the funds to do that right now, right? So. I I have to pay the 20% down payment, which sure is gonna be slightly less, but then I have to pay another $7,000 on top. I have to pay closing costs. I have to pay all these fees just to get the deal done. The other option that happens a lot of the time is that the seller will actually drop the price to the appraised price. So in this case, they would drop the price to 283. I would still have the 20% down payment and I would actually come out ahead because then I would be saving an extra $7,000 on the property. Not something that I super feel good about, you know, because it's just not a great situation for the seller. But I mean, hey, I'll take it. If I can negotiate that, that's something that's great for me. I'm gonna end up saving a little bit of money in the long run. The other thing that you've got, the third option, is that you can split the difference somewhere down the middle, right? So I might tr contribute a little bit, the seller might contribute a little bit, and we might have to come to some type of common arrangement in order to make that happen. For the purpose of this video, I don't know exactly what's gonna happen just yet. I'm still in talks with the other agent about what the seller's willing to do, what I'm able to do and can do and wanting to do, um, but I don't know where it's gonna go. I just wanted to share some uh, information for you guys on how these appraisals work and what you need to know if you run into a situation where yours also comes in lower than you were expecting. So with that being said, guys, drop a comment down below with what you would do in this situation. Would you still purchase the home? Would you go and cancel the deal? What would you do in this type of situation? Let me know in the comments and I'll catch you in the next one.